Welcome to episode two of Attack of the Poison Outputs. In this episode, we are going to learn all about ring signatures. So this is going to be a comprehensive overview of ring signatures. And also, we are going to see what a poisoned output looks like. All right, so here's the example. Uh, let's say you bought 10 XMR from a KYC exchange earlier this month, and you withdraw that to a personal wallet. And now you want to buy something with that Monero. So you spend four XMR. What does that look like? Okay, so we are going to break this down. Okay, so I am using the CLI wallet. Um, this is the wallet that I use basically for all of my hot wallets, as well as my cold storage wallets. Um, I will be explaining the commands as I go along because this is a command line uh, wallet. Um, however, I would recommend if you are newer to use Feather Wallet. Uh, I will be doing a tutorial on that later on regarding coin control and things like that. Uh, but for now, um, just uh, follow along and uh, I'll explain everything. So I'm going to type in the command balance. And that shows us that we have 10 Monero. And now I'm going to type in incoming transfers. And what this does is it shows us the uh, transactions that we have received on um, or in this wallet. So as you can see, we only have one transaction in here. It was for 10 Monero. And we have the transaction ID right here. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm now going to open up a block explorer. And I'm going to open up the transaction. So this is the um, transaction we received from the KYC exchange. And you know, obviously, we don't know any information really about this other than there are two ring signatures down here, apparently. And we know that the amount that was sent to us has to be at least 10 Monero. And we don't know how much they, they could have sent us 100 Monero. So 10 Monero would go to us and 90 would go back to them in the stealth addresses. But we don't know. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you which stealth address we received. So I'm going to go back into our wallet, and I'm actually going to type in the same command as earlier, but I'm going to add the verbose tag to it, and here we get some more information. So we have the transaction ID like before, but now we have this pub key here, as well as the key image. Now, the key image is irrelevant here. Uh, what we actually need is this pub key. If we go back to the um, block explorer, you'll see that this is the stealth address that we received, right? 9FDF69B, right? This is what we received. So this is the stealth address that presumably went back to the uh, exchange as change. So we actually know what stealth address we received. So why am I telling you this? Well, the thing is, this stealth address, which is also called a pub key, this is actually the poisoned output. And when I send a Monero transaction, this string is what's going to appear in the ring signature. This is really important to understand because a KYC exchange will know that we have this stealth address in our wallet. So if we're not being careful, we can actually reveal our identity in certain ways if we are kind of just sending out um, poison outputs willy-nilly. Okay, so now I'm back in my wallet, and I'm now going to send that for Monero. So I'm going to say transfer. I'm going to type in an address. By the way, I'm using the stage net, which is why the address begins with a 7. In case you were wondering. And four. So what I'm saying here is I'm sending to this address for Monero. It's going to ask, ask me for my password. It's going to ask me for the uh, transaction fee, which I'm going to confirm. And it's sent. Okay. So now I'm going to copy this transaction ID, we're going to go back to 
xmrchain.net. I'm going to open the uh, transaction we sent. And remember, this stealth address, well, would you look at this? Hold on. Boom. There it is. It's in our ring signature. This right here, this is our poison output. And a chain analysis company, you have to imagine they're colluding with KYC exchanges, right? So they have essentially a database. It's, it's, it's your, um, your name with all of your outputs that they've sent to you. And they're logging these things, right? And so when this uh, transaction pops up, they're going to look at this and they, they're going to say, well, there's a 1 in 16 chance that Xenu just sent some Monero. Obviously, this doesn't really tell them anything. But as we move forward, you're going to see that actually this, this uh, metadata can come back to bite you. But this is indeed the stealth address that we had in our wallet. And as we see up, so to back up, uh, we have one ring signature. The reason we have one ring signature is because when you send a transaction or an unspent transaction output or a stealth address, if we're looking at it in that way, when you send it, you have to send the entire thing. Right. So if I go if I go back to my wallet here, that's why it says the unlocked balance is zero. Right. Because I had to send the that entire 10 Monero. So I sent the entire 10 Monero. Four went to the person I sent it. I, I you know, bought whatever from. Right. I sent four Monero to somebody. And in return, I get, well, it's five point nine 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 because I paid a transaction fee. But I get back, we'll just say six Monero back to me. But I have to wait now 10 blocks until I can unlock that. So now I'm back in my wallet. And what I'm going to do is type in that same command I typed in earlier, incoming transfers verbose. And as you can see here, I now have a brand new incoming transfer, right? This one got sent. And now I got the six Monero back or the 5.99. And we now have this new stealth address, right? So it's 2EE8DAD. We go back here, and would you look at that? 2EE8DAD. <laughs> it's coming right back to me. So we know that this is my stealth address. Um, and this is the amount being sent. So this would be the 4XMR I sent to whomever uh, at the beginning. Um, so yeah, that's essentially how Monero works, where you have a ring signature that's essentially made up of previously used stealth addresses. And what your wallet does is it goes through the history of all the stuff or all of the transactions and it has your transaction and it then uses its algorithm to pick um, stealth addresses around it and before and it does it in a mathematical way to really shield your real stealth address amongst the others. Um, and it does it in a way that's um, uh, creative and not obvious, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, here's the, here's the, um, the uh, actual main net. And as you can see here, you can actually click on the ring members and go back in time, essentially. So this is uh, 47C5. If we click on that, it will take us to a previous transaction where that was a stealth address. Um, and just to give you another example, 97BA, I click on this one and it brings me, and this, it was a stealth address back then. I don't know if you can see that. You should probably zoom in. But yeah, essentially, that's what a ring signature is, though. It's previously used stealth addresses. And then once you uh, send your Monero, it turns into uh, two stealth addresses where you have one stealth address going to the uh, individual you're sending it to and then one coming back to you. Oh, do you hear that, everybody? Why don't you give a warm welcome to my roommate, Robot? Beep boop. Thank you for having me on your program. Beep boop. Yeah, thanks for joining, Robot. Uh, do you have any other information to share with us? Beep boop. Yes, I do. You may be wondering, 
what would happen if somebody were to send all of their Monero. In that instance, there would still be two stealth addresses. The reason for this is actually very creative because if there were only one stealth address, then a chain analysis company would know that you are only sending all of your Monero. However, if there are two stealth addresses, you add plausible deniability to the transaction that is being sent. Therefore, the wallet creates a decoy stealth address and essentially tricks chain analysis into thinking that there might be a change stealth address created. Beep boop. Yes, that is actually absolutely correct, Robot. Good job. Yes, um, there's always going to be at least two stealth addresses for every single transaction. Uh, the only exception is block rewards, but those aren't really transactions. But a peer-to-peer -peer transaction will always have at least two stealth addresses for that exact reason. Um, if you only have one stealth address, then a chain analysis company will look at that and they'll say, okay, whatever ring inputs is, is true, they sent the entire thing. And if they're able to somehow to eliminate all the ring members, they will then be able to trace that transaction trivially. So, Robot, uh, do you have any plans for tonight? Beep boop. I am going to watch BattleBots. It gets my metaphorical blood pumping. Beep boop. Sounds like a plan, Robot. All right, everyone give another round of applause for Robot. So we're going to be wrapping things up here. But, you know, I really do want to point out that a chain analysis company seeing this transaction, this doesn't really give them much ground to to step on, right? Like they're looking at this, they're saying, okay, there's a one in 16 chance that, you know, um, that we just sent Monero. That's not really telling them much. It's not telling them anything about our wallet balance. It's not telling them about any other transactions we've ever made. They don't know which stealth address is coming back to us, which stealth address is going to somebody else. They don't know who's receiving it. They don't know the amount being sent. And by the way, if you're new to Monero, wallet addresses don't appear on the block explorer. So they don't even have that to stand on. So really, this doesn't tell them much. However, however, we're going to be doing more examples. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how with CoSpends, a chain analysis company can actually, with a high degree of confidence, know that you just sent Monero. So that's my hook. Hey, if you like this content, you learned something today, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't know that about Monero. Please donate. I'm a poor beggar. No, but seriously, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, we're going to have some more content for you soon. So have a nice day and stay tuned for part three.